Hello, in this video we're going to look at supply and demand where a tax is placed on the buyers or the demand side of the market. We'll also look at consumer surplus, producer surplus, and the deadweight loss before and after the tax. We have a market demand and supply given by the following equations. Here's our demand equation and our supply equation. And we'll first get the no tax equilibrium. So no taxes in this market. We're going to set the two equations equal to one another. And going to solve for the price, dividing through by 3. The equilibrium price is $15. Taking this 15 and plugging it back either into the demand or supply equation, we'll get our equilibrium quantity. So I plug it back in the supply equation. 15 minus 5 gives us an equilibrium quantity of 10. Now we're going to impose a tax in this market on buyers. The tax will equal $3 per unit. So every time a buyer buys the product, they'll also have to pay the government, write, the, write a check to the government for $3. So here's our quantity demanded. Here's our quantity supplied. And you'll notice here I am subscripting the prices. So when there's a tax, there's a difference between what buyers pay and sellers receive. So the net price paid by buyers with a tax is going to equal the following. The price that buyers pay with the tax or after tax is going to be the price they pay the sellers for the good plus the $3 tax, in this case, that the buyers submit to the government. So buyers pay the seller for the good and write the government a check for the tax. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my quantity demanded equation, this demand equation, and I'm going to substitute out this P subscript B for P subscript S plus 3. So I make that substitution. Uh, important point here is this minus 2 is being multiplied entirely through this P subscript S plus 3. So simplifying the right-hand side, minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. And 40 minus 6 leaves us with our demand equation in the face of taxes equal to 34 minus 2 times the price that sellers receive. Now we're just going to do what we did in the first part, just set both equations equal to one another. Quantity demanded equal to quantity supplied. Divide through by 3. We solve for the price that sellers receive. It's $13. The price that buyers pay now is going to be this $13 plus the $3 check that buyers pay to the government. So buyers are net out of pocket $16 per unit for the good. So to get the equilibrium quantity, I'm just going to take this $13 here and plug it into this demand equation. And we get 8. Or alternatively, you could have took this $13 and plugged it into the supply equation over here. So in terms of graphing this, without the tax, with no tax, the equilibrium price is $15. The demand curve right here intersects the supply at a price of $15, and the equilibrium quantity is 10. With a $3 per unit tax on buyers, the demand curve shifts down by the amount of the tax, so we have the demand curve with tax. Sellers receive this $13. Buyers pay sellers $13 plus the $3 tax to the government. Leaves buyers paying $16 per unit. And the equilibrium quantity is 8. In terms of consumer surplus without the tax, it's going to be the difference between the height of the demand curve without the tax and the price that buyers pay, $15, all the way up to this last unit consumed, the tenth unit. So we got a triangle here, and the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So we got a height of the triangle of 20 minus 15, and the base of the triangle is just 10. So we got a consumer surplus of $25. Producer surplus is going to be another triangle. It's going to be the difference between the price that sellers receive when there's no tax, which is also $15, and the supply curve. All the way up to the last unit sold, the tenth unit. So the area of this triangle, one-half base times height. We got a height of the triangle of 15 minus 5, and a base here of 10 units. Producer surplus is $50. The total surplus is consumer surplus plus producer surplus 
that equals $75. With the tax, consumer surplus is going to fall. It's going to be $16. So with the tax, consumers are now paying $16. So the difference between the height of the demand curve without the tax and this $16 all the way up to the eighth unit here. So the area of this triangle right here uh, is $16. Producer surplus is going to be another triangle. So producers are only receiving $13 now. So the difference between $13 and the supply curve, that area up to the eighth unit. So the height of the triangle is 13 minus 5. The base is 8. We get producer surplus of 32. The government is taxing eight units at $3 a unit, so government tax revenue is $24, and that would be actually a rectangle if you wanted to visualize it. So this rectangle right here, 16 minus 13, and it's eight units long. So that area with times length is $24. Total surplus, adding these three values together, we get $72. We could back into the deadweight loss by looking at the change in total surplus. Total surplus went from $75 to $72. Another way we could measure the deadweight loss more directly is calculating the deadweight loss triangle, and that is going to be this triangle right here. So it has a height of 16 minus 13. And the base here of this triangle is 10 minus 8. And that will also give us the deadweight loss of $3. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.